me again guys this is rose green and she says i accepted mr christian's challenge with my comment with scripture was deleted she took it as a personal attack that i blocked her because she was baiting and i tried to talk to her about how uh, everything she did she took out was out of context and she started to bait and then she got angry okay in the comment section pinned so she's self-glorifying quite a bit here actually and I'd actually had it out with this woman February I think it was February um, taking I mean the amount first of all the amount of fake sweetness and fake syrup syrup uh, in her videos is disgusting second of all she took scripture clean out of context applying it to subjects it didn't even apply to and <clears throat> she's using these same exact scriptures everybody else uses like John 15 10 if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love but they never for never remember what commandments was he talking about and I point out Rose which I don't know you're probably not going to see this anyway but I point out Rose if you think you're keeping the commandments why are you so heavy why are you overweight because gluttony is a sin so if you're going to keep the law, you need to keep the whole law. All that idol, all those idols you got pinned behind you in your videos, you need to throw all them in the trash. If you're going to follow the law, you need to follow it completely. Because if you're going to do be a doer of the law, you have to be a doer of the whole law. Not just the parts you like. Not just the parts you think make you special or make you feel good about yourself or make you more righteous than other people, which you're not. None of us are more righteous than each other. And actually, from the videos that I've seen of hers, there's no faith there at all she's just proclaiming something it was a hobby at the beginning of the year and now she's turned it into um still a hobby <laughs> because she doesn't know what she's talking about in the scriptures at all now this is awesome second john 1 6 and this is love that we walk according to his commandments this is the commandment just as you have you heard from the beginning that you should walk in it but you forgot to post the rest of the scripture what is the commandment? Let's go look. Because we can go to eSword and bring it right up. Y'all know which ones I'm going for. See, this is what I'm talking about. They never quote the whole thing. Oh, she's loving my comments. Good, because I blew up her comment section on that video. Let's see. Was that Second John 1? No. Wait, maybe it was Second John 1. Yep, Second John 1. So... She put verse 6. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment. And she stopped there. This is what's wrong with you guys. This is the problem I have with you. And this is why we do what we do. None of you are showing the actual scripture that proves you wrong. You said I was doing that? Okay. You posted verse 6 up to that comma. That you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it. No, no, I take that. You did post the other one. But you didn't finish it. Verse 7, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. I've never heard you say that. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose the things we worked for, but that we may be full of reward. But what commandment was he talking about? Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. But what commandment was he talking about? Well, see, you got to go back a little bit. Verse 4, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from the Father. So he mentioned one commandment, but listen to this. And now I plead with you, lady. Oh, lady, <laughs> not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. What commandment? He just gave you the commandment. It's the commandment of love. That fulfills the whole law. Why is this so such a problem for you guys? Why I don't understand why you don't completely finish. You put 2 John 1 6. I don't know why you don't finish the scripture. Read it in context. This is why you misunderstand. This is why you guys are constantly having troubles with this. Why you're constantly having to come over onto our channels and 
uh, try to argue scripture with us because you don't take the whole thing into account. But if you bother to watch my videos and watch them all the way through, you see I'll do five above and five below the scriptures you quote and prove it wrong. You are lacking in understanding. And I don't say that as a derogatory way. I say that because you don't lack the understanding you should have. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. What's the will of the Father? So you've got to go look at these in context. Let's go look. Let's see. Let's do a Bible search. Will of the Father. It goes all the way back to Genesis. We're going to go down here. Let's see. So we see a bunch of stuff for will of the Father. But there's one in particular I'm looking for. Let's see here. That was... Um, So we have righteousness imputed apart from work, not of works, but of him who calls. That's in Romans 9.11. The other one was Romans 4.6. Let's see. Where's that one I'm looking for? Let's see the word of truth. Works in you who believe. Works of faith. Sins is of the devil, destroys the works of the devil. Oh, are you serious? Okay. Go over here. So in John 6, 28, then they asked him, what must we do to do the works of, do the works God requires? So let's go look at John 6, 28. Keep loving my comments. John 6. And then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him who he sent. So would that not be the will of the Father? Well, let's not let's not guess. Matthew seven twenty one, what is the will of the Father? And also John 6.40. So we're going to do John 6.40 and Matthew 7.21. John 6.40. Same, same chapter we were just in. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Does that sound like commandments to you? No. You guys don't know how to rightly divide. You spew scripture like it's just a random common thing, not realizing that you're treading the Son of God and the gift he gave us with his blood underfoot. There's a punishment for that in the Bible. What's wrong with you? Why would you do this to yourselves? Because you're not hurting me. Matthew 7, 21. Let's go look at that one. You guys aren't hurting me one bit. Matthew 7. 
You're just running off at the mouth like kids. So not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Now you had quoted this one. It's actually mentioned in several different places. And they keep saying over and over again, we're going to do all these things. He, but what does he tell them? When they talk about doing these things, what does he tell them? See, you got to keep reading. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Doesn't that tell you that they never had a relationship with him? They never developed true faith in him. They kept trying to work their way to heaven. They kept trying to earn their salvation. The only way you get to heaven is through him. He's not the commandments. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You learn this if you read your Bible instead of just spewing scripture out, trying to use it as a weapon against your brothers and sisters. This is truth. This is truth. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs? Verse 16. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but bad trees bear bad fruit. So, who's bearing fruit that's good enough to eat here? Because I can give scripture that proves my point every single instance. And not just the same scripture. I can constantly give more and more and more scripture. You copied and pasted a big list of scripture from somebody else's page or somebody else's website from a, or from a Word document off your computer that you saved from somebody else's website, but you don't know those scriptures. You don't know any of them. And I just showed you took them out of context. Do we need to go look at another one? Let's see. Let's see. And some of these don't even apply to the conversation that was going on in that video anyway. And you will be hated for my name's sake, but the one who endures the end. See, you just copied and pasted this from somebody else's website. About half of what you put here doesn't even apply to the subject matter of the video you put it on. Let's see here. Oh, wow. This one here? You actually could... Uh, actually screwed yourself by putting this one in there. You did not choose me. This is John 15, 16 through 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and anointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you love one another. The Ten Commandments, there's no loving in there. Let me show you something about the Ten Commandments and the law. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, okay. Right here. Right here. This is 2 Corinthians 3 7. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, that's the Ten Commandments. Was glorious. Now listen, we can prove it. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses. Who got the, the two tablets? Who got the stone tablets? Moses. Because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. So the moment the law came, it was already passing away. Christ fulfilled the law and nailed it to the cross. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? That's what we have now. It's not about what we do in the flesh. It's about what we do in the spirit. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. You guys are self-condemning because you're trying so hard to follow a law you can't follow. The Jews couldn't do it. The apostles couldn't do it. Paul admitted multiple times he could not follow the law and he was perfect among the Pharisees. That's in the scriptures. You'd know this if you'd read them. So if even he couldn't do it, what makes you think you can do it? You can't. None of us can. That's why Christ died for us. That's why he came and paid the price, fulfilled the law, and nailed it to the cross to get us out from under it, to get it out of our way so we could walk in faith. Let's see. For if what was passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. The law is passing away. The law is going bye-bye.
but their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. The only way, and this is a way that we can use to tell whether you're saved or not, the only way you know these things is if you are with Christ because the veil is removed and then you now know you can't live under the law and justify yourself. I know. I used to do it. I was taught that. I was shown differently. Not by a man either. This was given to me at the beginning of this year by Holy Spirit. Not by the videos I watched because at that time I wasn't watching anyone's videos. None. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That way you see the actual truth. Now the Spirit, Lord, is the Spirit. And where the Spirit is, there is liberty. You're free. Why are you putting people under condemnation? Why are you guys making your own shackles and reattaching yourself to the law when Christ freed you from that? It's right there. 2 Corinthians. You say you know Scripture in context? Why are you quoting Scripture that actually denies the point you were trying to make? This is what I keep trying to get across to you guys, and you don't even see that you're hosing yourself. You are our epistle written on our hearts, known and read by all men. That's verse 2 in 2 Corinthians. Verse 3, clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. It's not about the law anymore. It hasn't been for 2,000 years. Why do you think when they were doing the sacrifices in the temple, and Jesus died, and they put him in the grave. When they went to the temple the next day, they had this thing that you, when you read Second Maccabees, you, you find this out. So you guys say I don't study, but I obviously know more than you do about it. In Second Maccabees, when they would close the temple doors after doing the sacrifice, they would wrap a sash around it that was red. Also, when they took the scapegoat up on the cliff, they would tie a red sash around its horns, cut it, and push it off the cliff. One half would be in the, in the Sanhedrin's hands. It would turn white in his hands. That indicated that the sins were washed away. Next morning they go to the temple and the sash was white instead of red. This happened while people were watching it. After Jesus died, it quit turning white. Why do you think that was? Because a new covenant had been activated. The old covenant was done away with. See, if you don't study and you don't read and you don't rightly divide like you think you do, you don't learn these things. That's why I have a thousand videos since the beginning of the year. I'm engaging in this study and finding out these things and sharing them with people so they know the truth. And the truth is, you are condemning yourself. You're not hurting me or anyone else, except for the people you're leading down that road with you. Which, I don't even think you're hurting them, they're doing it to themselves. That's willful sin. You're willfully denying Christ. Why? What purpose is it? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for you to put yourself under something he came for the sole purpose of releasing us from. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, no obeying the law, but our sufficiency is from God through Christ Jesus, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. What do you think that letter is? That's the law. Because the very next verse, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, Ten Commandments. But see, if you'd study, you'd know these things. If you'd read, you'd know these things. Instead of regurgitating what somebody else gives you on another website, or another page, or a vlog. Or whatever, wherever you guys are getting this from. Because you're not getting this understanding from Scripture because it's not there. You're getting it from other people and claiming it as your own. And that's a lie. Now you've also violated the Ten Commandments again by doing that. That you say you follow. So don't, don't pretend like you know something you don't know. Don't pretend like you're all that. Don't pretend like you're this. You keep loving my comments. I love that you're loving my comments. Keep loving them. That lets me know that they are still up. 
and people can see it. And then they'll come over here and they'll see this. And they'll see the truth that's contained in the scripture. I didn't give you anything that was from me. It's right there. The stuff you're giving, you're not putting in context for the people. You're giving them a scripture and then a commentary. Here's scripture. Right there highlighted on the screen. I'm not hiding anything from anybody. And I'm not scared of you. Least of all. You're not doing anything to me. But you're hurting a whole lot of people by preaching false doctrine and preaching untruths. And if you think that you've got something over on me and you're going to syrupy sweet the whole thing on videos and talk smack to people, I don't care because I'm not watching any more of your videos anyway. I blocked you. If you think that's doing something for you, go ask Fruit of the Testimonies what I did for her. I know you talked to her. And Joan. And Shelly. I'm not scared of you guys. Your doctrine is wrong because it doesn't match Scripture. I have no fear of any man or woman. If you guys think you got it figured out, bring me real truth. See, you just came to visit the debate table. I'm always sitting here. I'm always waiting here for somebody to come and debate because people always have questions. People always are waiting to say, you did it wrong. Okay, well, here's five chapters that prove otherwise. The whole tongues debate, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. Blows it out of the water. The bride debate, Ephesians 5. And nobody can refute it. And every time they say something, here. And they never come back and refute it. Because they can't. Because the truth is the truth and it stands on its own authority. And the truth is the word of God. Which is Christ in, in writing, in written form. You can't change this to make it mean what you want. It only, it only affects you. Because I'm not going to suffer any condemnation because of it. And you've now been warned. So there's no blood on my hands when you fall. You have an opportunity to repent, and I suggest you do it. You don't have to admit nothing to me or anybody else. But you really need to get this. You really need to get dig into these scriptures and see what they mean. This is childish, and it's stupidity. You are willfully walking in ignorance, and I don't know why, because there's no reason for it. You got James 2 quoted here. I did a whole video, two videos breaking down James 2 and showing that people have been misinterpreting James 2 all this time. What works is he talking about? See, when we ask you guys those questions, you never answer. You start changing the subject and throwing it into something else. I did two videos answering that question. So who's rightly dividing? Who's taking on the challenge? You just regurgitated something from somebody's uh, Word document. And whoever, Matthew 10, 38, whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. What is he talking about? The commandments? No. You're not rightly dividing. Go read that scripture in context. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. If it's all about rest, why are you working? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What's easy and light about the Ten Commandments and the Law? Nothing. Nothing. You guys quote this stuff completely out of context. Ridiculous. And unnecessary. And you're doing, you're condemning yourselves. And you actually, you said you put what? You said you put over 50 scriptures? No, you didn't. It's not even close. That's 25? Not even 25? Not even close. No, take that back. That's about 30, 35. It may, may be coming up on 40. That's it. Ridiculous. Oh, wait, for, for the... Yeah, check this out. Galatians 5.17 For the flesh, flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. So that ye cannot do the things ye would do. What do you think the flesh is doing? Trying to be self-justified? But the spirit is justified already in Christ? So, with your flesh, you're obeying the law. With your flesh, you're putting yourself under condemnation. 
when you should be walking according to the Spirit like the Scriptures say. But you're not taking it into context. You're not reading and rightly dividing like you should be. You're wrong. Don't like it? I don't care. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to make people feel good about themselves. I'm here to give you the truth because you're condemning yourself. You're the one that's going to have to suffer for this, not me. But I'm sure not going to withhold the, the uh, alarm about this and the warning. Not, this isn't for condemnation. This is to, to help you. But if you don't get it, that's, that's on you. You posted another scripture that, that denies you. James 1.25. She's re-loving re my comments to try to get my attention. Childish. Because I didn't put that many comments on her channel. James 1.25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, is that the law and the Ten Commandments? No. We're bound under those things. Death and condemnation were in those things. The perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Is What is that talking about? See, you're not taking it into context. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the Mosaic law and the Ten Commandments are not liberty. They're binding. You either do them or you don't do them. You mess up in one, you've messed up the whole thing. I know you're not doing animal sacrifices, so you violated the law. And you're subject to condemnation and death because of it. Law of liberty, and continueth therein. This is freedom in Christ. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. What work? What works is it? We just covered it. What are the works of God that we may do them? This is the work of God, that you believe on the one he sent. But a doer of the work. Faith is your work. Faith and trust in Christ is your work. Don't believe me? Go read the scriptures. It's in there. All you got to do is, it's a simple search. If, if you can know how to do that. This man shall be blessed in his deed. See, when you don't take it in context, you don't know these things. You have to read all the scriptures that pertain to that. And you're posting scripture that denies you. You're posting scripture that proves you wrong. And you think it proves you right. That's amazing to me. One John three twenty four, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Well, we know who he and him is. That's the the follower and Christ. What commandments? We covered it. There's two. It's a commandment of love, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So it's again by the Spirit. And we can just go on and on and rip this thing apart, but good night. See? See that? There's something wrong here. Something very wrong here. Anyway, y'all. I can't make it any clearer, and I've done video after video covering this. But if these silly people want to do this stuff and they, they want to mess around, great. I will be happy to call you out. I don't care. Because... The truth is the truth, and you're not preaching the truth. And this isn't because I'm trying to make you look bad. It's because you're leading people into a very false understanding. And what it's fostering and what it's creating is a sense of hatred. Because now they're going from your channel to other channels that aren't they think aren't like them and condemning them. Well, we're not supposed to do that to our brothers and sisters. Did I condemn you? Nope. Have I condemned you? Nope. Will I condemn you? Nope. But I'll sure tell you when you're doing something wrong, and that's prescribed in the scriptures. Reproof, rebuke, and correction. You need to be corrected. You're not taking scripture correctly. You're just regurgitating it out like it's a tool or a weapon to be used against people that aren't like you. That's wrong. You, you bet I deleted your comment. I blocked you. I'm not going to sit here and have you harass people in my comment sections. I don't care. And that doesn't make any difference. You can say it does, but it doesn't make any difference. None of that makes any difference. I cannot have a conversation with you guys. That's why I do videos instead of addressing you directly. Which, actually, I do because I loaded your comment section up. Just like I did Fruit of the Testimony. And Shelly. And Joan. And, and all of this is this. So there's your scripture references that prove what's going on. I have other videos that cover this. I invite you to watch them. 
Oh, right, you can't. See, I only block the worst of the worst. I shadow ban everybody else. Y'all need to figure this out. Don't like it? I don't care. I hope you're mad. I hope you're offended. I hope your sensibilities have been, rised, have been raised up. You need it. You need conviction. Because you guys aren't doing this right, and you need to get it right. Rose, you can't keep loving my comment. It's not going to get my attention. I'm not going to come over there and comment anymore. I don't care. I said all I needed to say. And now, mark and avoid. Silliness, guys. Silliness. This is why you have to read the Bible so you know what you're talking about. So when you run into something like this, you can address it directly with truth, not with your understanding. No hatred. No nothing like that. Just truth. Throw the scripture at them and say, there you go. If they don't receive it, that's their problem. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.